Finally, guys! After over 10 years of development, Star Citizen is finally now testing server meshing with its jump point tech. This is the mechanic that allows players to jump from one star system to the next. That's right, Star Citizen is finally gonna have more than just one star system with the new Pyro system. Now, right now, this testing is going on behind closed doors in something that's called Evocati, which is a select group of players who have shown that they test the game quite well and are awarded just this ability to test things earlier than the rest of the community. It's not paid, it's kind of like a, a larger community Q&A group. I'm part of that test group, and so I've been able to actually get in and try it for myself. Unfortunately, though, it is under NDA for visual, so I can't show you anything, but thankfully there's really nothing to show right now, so I don't have to feel that bad about you not seeing it, because it was purely a test to see whether or not it works and to figure out if there's any bugs in the code of going from one server to the next using the jump point stuff. So if by the end you guys think I did a good job describing it to you and you want to see more videos like this when Evocati stuff comes out, you can let me know by hitting that like and subscribe button to show your support, but only if you think I deserve it. So let's get straight into it. So here's what's been happening. Basically, we've got the Stanton system and the Pyro system, and when you launch the game, you can choose to go to either or. You go to the either Pyro jump point if you're in the Stanton system or the Stanton jump point if you're in the Pyro system starting off. One other thing of note in this test is that the Pyro system isn't actually the full system just yet. This is an older version that they're using as a placeholder just for the test, so there wasn't really any focus on doing any missions in Pyro for this just yet. So anyway, after choosing your home base, you spawn, get your ship, and you fly out to the jump point depending on which system you're in. And when you arrive, you'll see everything as normal, only there's now a glowing little ball at the end of the the gates that they already created as of the current patch that you can play right now. So the footage you're seeing on the screen is basically what I saw, save for a glowing ball at the end. Now the ball is a placeholder, it's just like this swirling thing that looks a little bit like a galaxy. We actually don't know what their goal is for the gates. Look, they've shown us a couple different versions of it, and on the arc map right now, which is what I'm showing you here on the screen, is one of the ways that they've shown in the past where it's kind of like a wormhole where there's a lensing effect going on that you could see through to the other side. I actually kind of like this effect and hope they go back to it, but we'll just have to see how it works out. Anyway, so ships now have a jump drive, which is separate than your quantum drive, but you activate it the same way. You turn on your quantum drive when you approach the end of the pyro gates where a new HUD pops up. You've got your jump drive status, your jump point status, whether or not it's open or closed. I imagine this is because at some point it'll become unstable or closed, probably to do with the server occupancy on the other side. That's just my guess. And then you have another thing that indicates whether or not it's open and ready for you to go in. You also have a distance indicator where you have to be within 15 kilometers of the jump point for it to start working to align it. And then once you are aligned properly, you will start tuning to be able to go through. Now, there is an alignment that has to do with the functionality of these jump points. You actually need to be in the right position to go through. And if you look at the jump points represented on the arc map, you'll see that there's this cone thing coming off that connects into the distance to the other jump point. So I'm guessing that has to do with that in terms of the lore. So you have to be properly pointed into it. Right now, like I said, there's no visuals to tell us whether or not we're aligned properly. We only can look at the HUD to tell us about our general alignment. And with this playtest, there were some people struggling to actually get through the jump point with their alignment. It seems that even though it says you can be within 22 degrees of aligning to the opening, if you're even just a little bit off from zero, it seemed like people were bouncing off. And when I say bouncing off, people were being flung like two kilometers a second backwards in the opposite direction, sometimes colliding with other people. Additionally, in this current test, there's no way for players to jump together with other players, so it was a one-at-a-time affair with some very rare moments where people are actually able to enter the jump tunnel together. More on that later, though, because I think that's actually a very important key point about how jump points are going to function for the future when Pyro is released. Anyway, once you're aligned within, say, a few degrees of the opening to the jump point and everything's spooled and ready, aligned and tuned, you can then start going towards it after you request access from ATC. So there's an ATC step associated with this as well. It all feels a little bit clunky, but this is pretty early on, and so the usability of it 
clearly isn't the focus here. Again, it's just about functionality, so I can't judge it too harshly. I hope it's a little bit more user-friendly. I think having special effects will probably help people out a lot in figuring out the alignment, in addition to having a bespoke HUD system that helps you get your ship in the right place. Anyway, once you're aligned, once you're ready to go, you just start going forward towards the singularity, the glowing ball, and after you get close enough to it, the world around you transforms into the tunnel, and then you travel through the tunnel to the other side, which is in the pyro system. Now, the tunnel itself right now doesn't look like it did in the previews for Citizen Con. It doesn't really look like anything. It's just a gray box tunnel right now, built <laughs> like a sphincter. <laughs> it's a little bit cringy, but it's a placeholder right now. It's clearly not for us to look at. It's just for us to test. And so once we got to the other side, well, once I got to the other side, I was in the pyro system on another server still running with no crashes, no 30Ks, no problems. It worked perfectly when I was finally able to get it to align. Now, I should say here that I struggled quite a lot trying to get through the gate the first few initial tries. Getting that alignment right was really, really tricky and a bit frustrating. So this test right now is definitely not ready for wider testing. Its usability is a little bit too tough and I think that people might end up getting frustrated if they tried themselves. But this is just kind of par for the course for Evocati. Evocati is usually a very rough play test, purely focusing on very specific things that the developers want to stress out at a bigger scale that the QA team they have in-house isn't able to do with their smaller numbers. Having more people looking at it, trying it, is just a better way to figure out what issues are present to get them sorted out before it goes to a wider play test. Now, what's most amazing to me is that we were first introduced to a functioning version of server meshing at CitizenCon at the end of last year. And they've done multiple tests now leading up until this, which has been really rapid in terms of the timeline Star Citizen has had for developing the game. They're doing this very quickly. It seems that they've got their eyes set on getting this in a functional state for us. Now, I said that there was something interesting about the mechanics about jumping together. It does look like we're going to be able to jump with our friends together in a group, which is important because jump gates are going to be choke points that you're probably going to encounter enemies at, especially in Pyro, where there's probably going to be a lot of pirates. So if you're jumping through, you're probably going to want to be ready to run away if you're carrying anything valuable, lest you get destroyed. Now again, this playtest wasn't focused on combat, so we didn't see that happen, but I imagine it's going to be camped like it's been in other games with jump points such as games like EVE Online, if you played it with warp gates, whenever you go through in like low or null sec, you might get jumped. And sometimes guaranteed, you're guaranteed to get jumped. So having some friends with you to fight whoever's on the other side is probably a good idea. Some other interesting points about this test is that for this particular one, the two servers that were connected into the single shard were both capped at 60 players, but I understand that this is not the intention for the final iteration of first release of Pyro and Stanton. It's going to be higher than that, and they need to test that in a separate test, stressing the stress of the servers while they're connected with people jumping to and from the Pyro and Stanton system. So don't worry right now about the capacity of both servers just yet. That's not the focus. That's coming in a later playtest. But just the fact that both servers are connected now successfully with the replication layer, with the shard system, with people jumping to and from it, is, in terms of coding, a big step forward, a massive step forward. This is what Star Citizen has always needed to get to the point from being a bunch of separate little servers that don't really feel connected to a big open world with many, many people to encounter and stories to create. Now, I'm sure many of you guys are going to ask down below when you can test it yourself. We've got no information on when this is going to be available to the wider public to test, but my guess is that it's going to be not too far from now. They probably first need to get this system working a little bit more intuitively for a wider community playtest, lest people get really frustrated and angry with the system when the test isn't really focused on that just yet. So we might see a tech preview in the coming months around the release of 3.23, sometime before or sometime after. Again, just my guess. For when we're gonna see this actually come out in full form with Pyro in a 4.0 release, well, that still seems a little bit far off. 
Well, the server meshing team seems to be getting it all sorted to get it working, there probably is a lot of work left to do for the special effects side and getting the mechanics to feel polished and intuitive. So I think Pyro is probably still towards the latter half of this year. Definitely I think this year with jump points and server meshing, but I still think it might be sometime around CitizenCon, but hopefully earlier than that. So yeah, it's already turning out to be a pretty good year for Star Citizen, and I can't wait to see what happens next. See you in the next one.